If you get this within four foot, you can ask me anything you want. Oh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Now, that question. <laughs> Manchester United. <laughs> I don't want to come to the end of my career and have any regrets, so I want to be the best I can be. I feel like I yeah. can be even better than what I've been at the moment. Can you? I feel like I can. My aim is to be winning trophies season in and season out. With Tottenham rebuilding, is that crossroad moment coming for you? I think there's definitely a conversation to be had with the club. How do you think that conversation will go? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how that conversation will go, if I'm honest. If you don't know what the chairman's thinking, he might be thinking, if I can get 100 million for you, then why not? You I know? think it'll start with a two. I don't <laughs> think it'll be one. <laughs>
thankfully got it filler away. I don't know if you remember the game I scored that deflected yeah. free kick. And uh, from then, obviously started pretty much every game with him. And we built up a real good relationship. Um, we understood each other, not just football, but just personal yeah. as well. We had some great years and great moments. Obviously, would have loved to have won something with him and won a trophy with him. It didn't quite happen, but I'll always cherish the relationship and, and the years we had together, for sure. What are the differences working under Maurizio and then obviously going on to Jose? What are the differences in terms of the sort of programmes, the training, the yeah. style of play? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much completely different, if I'm honest. Just in the, in the style of play, the way they set up, the different tactical training we would do. Obviously, Maurizio would do a lot of gym work, a lot of gym base, whereas Jose weren't so much in, into that. But Jose obviously expected us to be men and expected us to uh, act like men and yeah. on the pitch, have leaders on the pitch. And, uh, and to be honest, that's probably where it didn't quite work out with, with Jose. We didn't quite have enough maybe leadership that, that we needed at the time. Obviously the club was in a, a difficult stage, obviously with Maurizio getting sacked, it's never easy, a new manager coming in, but again with Jose, I had a great relationship with him, you know, we got on really well from, from minute one. I think we understood each other, we had a similar mentality in, in how we saw stuff and uh, on the pitch, off the pitch, the mentality in training. So we kind of built that relationship and again, it's a shame that we couldn't go on to win things, but yeah. I've been lucky enough to work with Maurizio and Jose too incredible managers so that's only helped me in my career for sure. I heard that United well every club is big on sports science and gym but Jose not I don't I don't understand that part of it because you'd imagine that his teams, particularly at Chelsea, you know, really fit team, strong team, you'd expect that he would be big into that. Why is he not big into yeah, that? Yeah I mean it's not like against it. It's not no. like he says I don't want you to do it. Yeah. But it wasn't what he thought about doing first and foremost. No. You know, he, he was more on the pitch this is what we need to do, this is how we need to set up training on the pitch. And then he almost left it for you to be professional outside of it. He didn't yeah. kind of look after it and babysit it. I mean, we, yeah. we, had, we still had gym sessions that like the sports science guys would put stuff yeah. on, but he wouldn't, he kind of saw that as, he expected that almost, yeah. you know, we're professional footballers. He shouldn't have to tell us to do gym. It should be a given. I've got, always got this vision of Jose in a team talk before a game, asking you to win fouls, to be cute, to go down and take, you know, I've always got this vision of a wise man. I mean, our boss used to, so it's not something that yeah. I think's wrong. Is that right? Would that be a difference between Jose and Rizzo? I can't imagine Rizzo doing those sorts of things because the team seemed to get a little bit wiser. It changed a little bit, got a bit smarter. Would that be right? Would you, would you, yeah, you see that? I think, I think so. I think, like I say, Jose's had so much experience in, in the biggest of games, at the biggest of clubs. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's what I mean by kind of we had a similar mentality in that aspect. Like, do anything you, to win. Do anything to win. And, and, that, yeah. and that's the game. And I mean, yeah, Jose. He just wanted to win. That was the mentality of trying to get into the players at Spurs, like doing anything to win. And, and like you said, I think we did get a bit more streetwise, but maybe there was relationships that didn't quite work there. But from my point of view, uh, he, he was great for me. Right. Come on, I, think, I think I've got the right line in here, you know. There's you opening up the green nice Honestly, you, this yeah. is, you told you've me it was, done, you've done me it was than, right in the bunker. I think it was left in the bunker. <laughs> you've done better than where I thought it was going, to be fair. You've done, right, we've got uh, 175. We'll go playing, eight iron. It's playing less than that. Play at 160. Eight, eight iron. Yeah. I'm going to go eight iron. Try and keep it a bit right, Gary. Comes in right to left. I'm going to end up in that bunker on the left, aren't I? You can feel it, can't you? I mean, it's not to be negative or anything, but it's just step that way. Anything right comes down yeah. here. Come on. Oh, that is so bad. Oh. That is so Talk bad. Talk yourself into that. Oh, he's took oh. himself. Oh, oh no. he's in the bunker as well. Oh, no. Obviously, a, a few weeks ago, just before the Carabao Cup final, the club made the change. As players, did you think that's, that's harsh just before that final? It might, obviously, it's difficult for you to speak about it because it's a club decision, but it felt on the outside, obviously, just doing it before. We get that managers get sacked, we get that managers move on. But just before that final, a yeah. chance to win a trophy. I mean, I was surprised. If I'm, I've, I've said that before. I was surprised of the timing of it. I mean, like I say, it was the decision of the club. Daniel would have had his reasons for, for doing it. But I was surprised. Obviously, Jose's a winner. We know Jose's record in finals and things like that. So I said before, we found out maybe five minutes before everyone else did. So, yeah, whether it is something that had been thought about for a while or it was just an in-the-moment decision, I'm not too sure. But I guess... So not, not consulted with the players or anything? No, no, no. We found out not long before everyone else. But, I mean, look, I understand chairmen have to make tough decisions yeah. at tough times. So I'd never knock a, someone for doing, for doing anything because I'm not in their positions. I don't know all the ins and outs. But, yeah, for sure I was surprised. But, look, Mace has come in and full credit to Mace. I think Mace has done incredibly well just to, to handle all the situation. It's not easy coming in when a manager's been sat. Obviously, it's his first kind of role in first yeah. in management. Uh, he's played with a lot of us, which ain't easy to come in no. and then be a manager. But 
he hasn't tried to like be this power hungry manager. He's just no. come in and been been himself, and and I think the boys have really taken to that. Yeah. Right. Oh dear. Here we go. Are you putting? <laughs> I could put this. I think. He could put. You know. I mean, it's about 400 yards of it. That. That weren't far away. I've creamed that one. Jeez. 80. 80 yards. But I mean, we're well, trying to land it just over that ridge. That's 60. 50, like 55 yard land or something right. like that. And like, left edge of that buggy. Left edge of the buggy. Right. Yep. Oh, it's floppy. It's soft. Shot. It's nice. Got a touch to it. Go in. Oh. Go in. Shit. Ooh. Oh, look at this. Need to bring the cameras more often, I think. It's the best wish shot you've ever had. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> been... I wouldn't have expected I'm... you to be better at finishing than me, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's put it within four feet. This, this... Does it annoy you? I mean, I, I, I've fallen into trap myself in the last 10 years beyond television. This perception of Tottenham, when you, you are tough, you are a leader, you are resilient, you're an unbelievable player, score long goals, and then you get people calling the club, whether it be flaky, you know, bottle it in big moments, that must really annoy you. It must be someone like you. Yeah, no, it's hard to, it's hard to hear, if I'm, if I'm totally honest, you know. Like you say, we've, we've been so close and, and things could have been a lot different, but I understand, obviously, we haven't got over the line. As a club, we haven't won things, we haven't been dominant, when you could say we've probably had the best team we've had for a very, very yeah. long time. But for sure, you hear them comments and they kind of eat at you a little bit inside. But did they bite you? Did they? Yeah, did... They, they, they almost get you going a little bit. You know, it's, yeah. it's almost trying to prove people wrong. And, and, and that's been kind of me my whole career in, in all aspects, really. Like my first season getting called a one season wonder and all yeah. stuff like that. It, it kind of. Who it called you that? You got a name? Who, which pundit <laughs> called you a one season wonder? It wasn't might, me. You might call me that one <laughs> It wasn't me. I put you on no. corners, but I didn't call you a one season wonder. <laughs> no, I mean, but no, all stuff like. For me, I'm, you, obviously you've known me through for England and stuff. Yeah. Almost not like that pressure, but you know it gets me going and it brings out the best in me. And yeah, when you hear stuff about your club, it's never easy. Of course, I know what it's like working day in day out, playing with the players, working hard in the gym, in training to to try and win stuff, to try and win trophies. Of course, it hasn't happened, but it don't mean we're not working as hard as anyone else. As a club, we just haven't been able to to get over the line. But I mean. No, it's been some amazing moments, some amazing years for, for the club. So there is some positives there, but of course, my profession is about winning. I want to win. Yeah. So it for sure is great to me that we haven't done that. Is that the most important thing for you? You're 27 years of age now. You've got eight, 10 years left in your career that you want trophies, you need trophies. Or actually, is it more important to you that, you know, Alan Shearer at Newcastle, Matt Letizia at Southampton, players who've stayed at a club a long time and they've got that legacy in a different way. What's most important to you? For me, is I, I don't want to have come to the end of my career and have any regrets. So I want to be the best I can be. I've said before, I'd never say I'd stay at Spurs for the rest of my career. I'd never say that I'd leave Spurs. I'm, I'm, I'm at that stage where you could say, you know, people might look at it as, oh, he's desperate for trophies, he needs trophies. I still, I still feel like I've got almost another career to play. I've got seven, eight years, yeah. kind of what I've had so far in the Premier League. So I'm not, I'm not rushing anything. I'm not desperate to, to do anything. But yeah, I just want to be the best version of me. And I feel like, for sure, I've still got so much more to give. I feel like I yeah. can be even better than what I've been. I can produce better numbers than what I'm producing at, at the moment. So Can you? I, I feel like I can. I've said before, and, and people, people are like, I'm someone who, I'm not afraid to say I want to be the best. I'm not afraid to say I want to try and get on the, the level that Ronaldo and Messi got to. Yeah. You know, that's, that's my ultimate goal. That's my aim is to be winning trophies season in, season out, scoring 50, 60, 70 goals season in, season out. And that's the standard. I want to set myself because I feel like if I, I give myself anything lower, then I might get to the end of my career and be like, actually, I could have maybe done a little bit more. I could have scored a few more goals. So that's my drive. The pressure from myself is always bigger than what any, anyone else can put on me. And, and then, like I said, I still feel like I've almost got another career to, to go and achieve what I want to achieve. With Tottenham rebuilding, you just set yourself up there and in a little bit of a transition. Is that crossroad moments coming for you? I think so. I think it's definitely a conversation to be had uh, with the club. Yeah, like I say, I, I want to be playing in the biggest games, the biggest moments. Like I'm, this season, I'm there watching the Champions League, watching yeah. the English teams in there doing amazing. And they're the games I want to be involved in. I want to be at, in them games. So for sure, it's, it's a moment in my career where I have to kind of reflect and, and see where I'm at and, and ha have a good, honest conversation with the chairman. And I hope we can have that conversation. And yeah, I'm sure he will want to kind of set out the, the plan of where he sees it. but. Ultimately, it's going to be down to me and how I feel and, and what's going to be the best for me in, in, in my career at this moment in time. 
Daniel has that reputation. Now, I've called him one of the sort of smartest operators in the game. Some people say he's difficult. Some people say that he's, you know, he's harsh. Some people say he's selfish in terms of the club. I've looked at him and thought he's always protected the club's interest. How have you found him, and what, what's your views of him in terms of your dealings with him? And yeah. how do you think that conversation will go? Yeah, I mean, he's been he's been great with me. If I'm if I'm yeah. totally honest, I mean, he's always rewarded me with with contracts. Like, obviously, I signed maybe a, a four or five year deal when I was 21, but I done well, so yeah. he kind of added to that. So he's always been he's been great with me, he's and been fair. he's been fair with me. He's never kind of just held me onto a contract and said, "No, I've yeah. paid you that. You're going to stay on that." So we've always had a good relationship. But yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how that conversation will go, if I'm honest. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's like as players, you don't know what the the chairman's thinking. I don't know. No. I mean, he might want to sell me. He might be thinking, if I can get 100 million for you, then why why not? You know what I mean? I'm not going to be worth that for the next two three years. So. I think it'll start with a two. I don't think it'll be one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be. Uh, I hope. But I mean, we have a good enough relationship. I've given the club. Well, I've been there 16, 16 years of my yeah. life. So I hope we can have a good, honest conversation and, and see where we're at in that aspect. Good. Right. Let's right. get in this bunker. This bunker could be a little bit like a conversation with Daniel <laughs> Levin. <laughs> get out of this Trying bunker. Get out of here. <laughs> are, you, are you all right there? Yeah. This is going to be honestly. This is got a disaster in all over it. Oh, you got under it. Say, <laughs> oh, go. yeah. What up? Embarrassing. Big old bunker that one. Honestly. Oh, I just need a bit of a few cameras, mate. That's all I need. I told you that the other day, didn't I? I just need a bit of. Uh... Better under pressure. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to go one down, doesn't it? Left edge. All right. He said, hit it oh, firm. Oh, he's giving it a go. He said, hit it firm. <laughs> what do you mean? Hit it firm. You're going to give me this hole or what? I think so. All right, I'll try and roll this one in anyway. <laughs> Honestly. Oh. There we go. Do I get a shot like on certain holes? I mean, you're, well, what's you're your off, by the way. I, I'm, I'm off 12, but I'm not off 12, really. All right, I'm a two, so. Are you a two? I'm a two. So I get a shot on each hole, don't I, really? All right then. Uh -huh. I'll still take the one. I'll take the one out. It's a good. Yeah, one up. It's a good part. It's a good part. It's putt. a good put to finish. I've left. I've left on a high. It's almost like I've lost three nil, but I've just got a goal in the last minute just to get sort of like a three <laughs> one. That three one's important. For me, the country comes first. That's um, unusual, that you know. To win something with England for me would just be a moment I'll truly never forget. I have to mention the corners, which was your decision. <laughs> <laughs> I've mentioned before about trying to do the NFL kicking. You want to do it, don't you? Yeah, it's really something that I think I can achieve. So England, 2016, first tournament. I was there. I'm going to start with Iceland because I can't start anywhere else because I can't get it out of my head. Yeah. I, and to, still to this day, I can't put my finger on it. Can you? Yeah, Iceland was a, it was a strange game. I mean, I, I felt that we was in a good place as a team, as a squad. Obviously, the group stage didn't go as well as we would have wanted, but in terms of the group, we was all together. We all was in a good place and... Um, yeah, I guess it's just one of them games. The momentum kind of went against us and, and we struggled to kind of kind of break them down. We maybe lost a little bit of patience in, in that game. But yeah, like you, that game stings still to this day. You know, it was a, a great opportunity for us as, as a nation to, to go far in a tournament and to go out to Iceland. Like, no disrespect, they, they deserved the win, they, they earned the win. But of course, we were expected to win that game and, and that one will always hurt for sure. Did it feel a bit like, I was watching, I was, I was on the bench, obviously. Did it feel a little bit eerie in the stadium? Like the atmosphere was a little bit strange. Yeah, it's almost like when we went two one behind, it was almost like the game had finished. It's like they scored yeah. in the last minute. There was just no kind of momentum that swung back in our favour. We never had a period in the game where you thought, oh, we're on top, we're on top, we're going to score. So it almost just like, yeah, once we went two one down, uh, I mean, on the pitch, we didn't obviously give up or anything like that, but there was just definitely a strange atmosphere in the stadium at, the, at that stage, for sure. And I have to mention the corners and the free kicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which was your decision. <laughs> <laughs> He's outed me finally. No, no. I, we didn't have anybody who was natural in the team, yeah, did we? Yeah, could yeah. take corners and free kicks. And you would, if you remember after training, there's yeah. about four or five lads tried corners, tried yeah, free yeah, yeah. kicks. And you're, you were taking those wicked free kicks from the right hand side, whipping yeah. them in. And you're almost scoring with every single one. Yeah. 
No, it, it was one of them. Like people will still ask me to this day why I was on Formula and Free Kits. And, and you uh, say me? No, uh, it, no. It, it was more me. It was definitely yeah, but, more me than. But I had no problem with it. I think it was almost just a thing because we didn't win the first game. It was like why is Harry on thing, yeah. why is Harry on corners? Whereas, like you've, you've seen some of the greatest strikers in world football take corners. Thierry Henry used to take corners. A lot of good natural ball strikers took corners. So, I mean, I think it was just something that got blown out of proportion because of how we was doing as a team. We didn't win the first game. It was like, what can we blame? What can we do? And, and it obviously become quite a, a big thing. But, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to take corners, take free kicks. It, it wouldn't honestly... Did it put a pressure on you unnecessarily in your first tournament? Because the because the attention it brought and it was a distraction away from what you do, which is obviously score goals. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I'm quite strong minded in yeah. myself. So, you know, like if, it almost if people don't want me to take corners, it almost makes you want to prove them wrong and, and take them. But, I mean, Wes had come to me after the first game and he just said that I'll, I'll, I'll take corners and I was like, yeah, that's no problem. Like, he was a skipper at the time. Uh, it, he felt like you know, it was the best thing for the team and, and that, that was that. So I think it was just something that really just got blown out of proportion. Yeah. From my point of view, it, it didn't take anything away from my first tournament or put any pressure on me in my first tournament. The fact that I didn't score or play as well as I, I wanted to obviously still eats at me a little bit, but that obviously drove me forward to, to then go and do what I'd done in Russia. I mean, to be fair, you say that we, you know, Wazza did go over and take the corners, and two of England's greatest, well, England's greatest goal scorer, and potentially what you could be England's greatest goal scorer, are having to take a corner. The, there was a problem that we, you just didn't have anybody else in the team who literally could take free kicks and uh, set pieces. But in terms of the back of that, did that make you more determined in 2018? I think so, 100%. Like I say, I was disappointed in, in how we'd done as a team in my own performance in that tournament. Obviously, being my first tournament, I wanted to, to go and express myself on on European football and world football. So going into Russia 2018, yeah, it gave me that hunger and desire. And um, I think I might have said after the, maybe before the tournament or after the first game that I wanted to win the golden boot in, in Russia and almost got laughed off in the in the press room because you had the likes of Ronaldo, Messi, some yeah. of the best players in the, in the world. And to go and do it was a, a huge achievement for me. And, and to do what we'd done as a team, you know, obviously we didn't get to the final, but we had an amazing tournament, amazing experience, uh, and I really feel like that put us in a, in a, in a great place going into, into Euros 2021 now. But of course, as you know, it's never easy to win a, no. a major tournament for England, so we need to, to try and make that happen. I mean, the squad's in, incredible. We've got a great mixture of kind of youth and it, kind of experienced players, so hopefully we can, we can use that to our advantage. Right, let's hit this shot, and then we'll Come on ask up. a few more on the way up. What have you got? Got a little eight iron. Eight iron? Yeah. Ah. Could be in the bunker. <sighs> Told you I didn't want to go right. Oh. My man over here says I need a five iron. <laughs> well, he's your caddy. You say you do? <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, let's get back in this. Oh, you didn't want to be right, you said, I didn't you? I told you not to go right. Oh, my gosh. That is going to be... A f you've, gone long, you've gone long as well, so you can blame your caddy. Oh, <laughs> come on, Harry. <laughs> oh, my God. That's going to be a fun trip to watch. What does England mean to you? I love my country. Extremely proud to, to play for my country, so it means everything to me. I, I mean, people ask me... I don't know, they asked me the question, would I rather win the World Cup or, or the Premier League? And I, I've always said the World Cup. To, to win something with England, for me, would just be a moment I'll truly never forget and be one of the proudest moments of my life. So uh, I'm excited to have the opportunity to do that. But yeah, I'm just a very passionate man about my country. There's some players who I, who I think of growing up that I think they're England players. Like Gary Lineker. I think of as an England player, David Platt, and I think of Harry Kane as an, I know you're a Tottenham player and you're, um, you're having an unbelievable career there, but I think of you as an England player because yeah. you represent the fans. I feel like you've got that relationship. Is that how you see yourself predominantly? Yeah, I, I guess so. For me, like I say, country comes first, you know, that, that, that was the proudest. That's unusual, that, you know. Yeah, I, I know it is probably unusual in, in modern day football. Yeah. Uh, but it's just the way I, I am, the way I, I've, been, I, I've been brought up. I used to love watching England growing up. I used to go to the pub with my family and sing all the songs. And, you know, shed tears when we'd go out and <laughs> things like that. But putting on the England shirt for my debut was the proudest moment of my professional career, without a doubt. And now to be capped in and lead the boys out, it's just a, a, a real special feeling every time I do it. Right, let me go into this long rough. I'll see you in about half an hour. All right. If you get this in within 
four foot, you can ask me anything you want. I could. <laughs> will, you, will you give me the answer to anything? <laughs> Well, I think what we do, I, I think I'm going to bump it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What? I think we go nine, nine? nine, I think. Okay, try and land it so that the base can slope and run it up. Be a little bit right, okay? A little bit right. Hello. Oh, here we go! <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at that! Here we go! I'm afraid that's only six foot away, though, so. Honestly, that's one of the best chips I've ever seen in this hole. <laughs> now, that question. <laughs> Manchester United. <laughs> Just pace that out. How many, how many foot? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, it's a good putt. Go. Oh, there's a bit in it here. Oh. Here we go. Have I got a shot on here? I think I have, haven't I? Well, you said, it, you said a shot a hole. I'm only playing five, so... But you have two. I think that's... All right, go on. So if you roll it in, Gary, you've won the hole. Gary. Here we go. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, it's going to be a chance Rubbish. for the half. So what's that, four net three you're in? Yeah. So I need this for the half. Oh. Give it a go. Yep. Uphill. Penalty to level against Scotland. <laughs> Smash it down the middle. <laughs> oh, he's missed. We're level. Level. We're level. level. Equaliser. The fullback's levelled. Ah, oh, <laughs> pilot through the break. Always Has the game changed? I, I was going to ask this all season. Did someone say to you, I want you to drop in a little bit deeper, I want you to play like a number 10, I want you to go and sort of turn and make more assists, or did you just think, that's, my, that's the way my game's developed? Have you made that decision? Do you know... Uh, it's the first time I've told anyone this, but do you know what it was? I was watching the Michael Jordan documentary and I watched him and, and how he kind of developed his game to just either attack or defend. He yeah. literally wanted to do everything for the team. And I was going into the season thinking, obviously, I want to improve, I want to get better, how can I do that? And I've always dropped as a player, I've always wanted yeah. to drop into the hole, but I guess it was like I wanted to be involved in the game as much as possible. Sometimes as a number nine, you can almost get just like you don't touch the ball for maybe five, yeah. ten minutes if, if we're kind of under the pressure or we can't quite get the ball into the final third. So I kind of said to myself, I want to be involved as much as possible. I want, if I have to drop into midfield, I would do that. And it almost worked well with Jose because he, he kind of saw that in my game pretty early and he made it clear to kind of the wingers or the other attacking players that if I drop, they've got to run. They've got to create that space yeah. and go in behind. And obviously the relationship with Sun kind of just blossomed and every time I got the ball he was running in behind and I think it caught a lot of teams out early on in the season. So my game developed a little bit but like I said I've always loved dropping him. I've always backed myself as a passer, as someone who can play long balls, through balls. So yeah, it's a, it's a part of me that I just wanted to improve and get better and I saw that as an opportunity to do that. It was such a conscious decision that you thought I can't only well, you do more than score goals, but I just don't want to be known as a goal scorer. I mean, you do, you're brilliant at defending in terms yeah. of your heading clear, but then you're setting up goals and now, so you basically just want to become that complete player and that's off the Jordan documentary. Yeah, that was just off what, kind of watching him and uh, maybe a little bit of inspiration of kind of how he become the best best player ever. And, and like I say, even down to the corners and the defending, I, I, I like defending in training. Sometimes in a small side of games, I'll just go in defence and because I like to see maybe what it's like as a defender going up against an attacker. So I like to maybe see different body positions, but I back myself as a defender as I would. I feel like I could play pretty much most positions on, on the football pitch. So when I'm back defending corners, I feel confident that if this ball comes my way, I'm, I'm heading this away. And if I block a shot, it's not as good as feeling and scoring a goal. I won't go that far, <laughs> but yeah, I just want to be involved in the game. I want to do as much as I can to help the team. And, and I feel like I've done that this season. That's very different than a mentality of say, uh, I played with Alan Shearer. And Alan was just a goal scorer. He never would have dropped in. He would have assisted for us, of course. Yeah. He made some great crosses. Or a Gary Lineker. Because I was watching the other season thinking, Son must be really happy with you. <laughs> he's like, you're setting him up more than he's setting you up. That's not the way it should go. Yeah. No, it's one of them. But I always back myself to score goals. Even when I had maybe five yeah. or six more assists than what I'd scored, I always know the goals were there. Because it ain't like I drop deep and I, then I just stay there. You know, I'm dropping deep to then create space for myself a lot of the time yeah. to then go in and arrive late in the box because sometimes as a number nine as a centre-back 
if, if they're always just in front of you, yeah, it's almost yeah. just like, okay, across is coming, he's there, I've got arms on him. But if I'm coming, if I've dropped into midfield, played it out wide, and then I'm running into the box, and yeah. there's someone else in the box, it's like, well, where is he? Like, who do yeah. I pick up? So in that aspect, I was always comfortable that I'd still score goals. But yeah, yeah to have the assist is something that I've definitely added to my, added to my game. And it's, it's nice to, to have that and be top of that, that leaderboard at the moment as well. But, uh, When's your documentary out? My one? Yeah. <laughs> Got to win a few trophies first to put something in it. Right, go on. Oh, is it me? It's you. It's, it's your honour. It's Green's up there to the right. So I'm going left of the bunker? Yeah, about 10 yeah. yards left of them. There we go. Oh, pure. All right, I think. That'd be fine. Ah, oh, dear. Yeah, shot. Good shot. Just starting to get into it now, you see. Shot a hole seems a bit moody now, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a short game that'll let me down. Mate, you just play one of the best chip shots I've ever the finishing. seen in my life. Wow. Oh, Is that no. in the water? No. <laughs> it's far right though, it'll just be, it'll be a long way in from there. He's just mentioned Michael Jordan, but who else inspires you in football, in life? I mean, my, my dad's a, a big part of my life. Always loved his mentality, he's always been a hard worker, and I, I guess a lot of my traits are from him and I'm someone who just gets on with things you know I'm not someone to moan about stuff or complain about stuff yeah uh, and, and that's what he was like so yeah I was very lucky to have good family around me uh, in that aspect and still to this day they they're a big part of my life they work a lot with um, like the stuff I do outside of football and yeah. I've got my brother here and I guess maybe other sportsmen I'm, I mean I've mentioned Tom Brady before and just kind of not not the same career as me in terms of, but his start in his career, you know, a lot of people doubted him. He was kind of a late draft pick in, in the NFL, and yeah. he had to work extremely hard to, to get to where he's got to. And, uh, and now, obviously, he's probably the best to ever do it in his sport. So I took a lot of inspiration from, from that when I was kind of about maybe 18, 19, I was out on loan, and, uh, you know, things probably didn't go as well as I wanted them to do when I was at Leicester and Norwich. But, yeah, it was just that thing of, OK, I'm still believing myself, I still believe I can make it to the, the highest level and watching a documentary about him kind of uh, yeah, gave me a little boost that I needed at that time. Do you know, look, I always think I've worked with you for three or four years and I always look to you and every time I speak about you on television I always think I never feel like you lose confidence. You know, yeah. I always look at you and think if you miss a chance it ain't going to bother you that much, if you score a goal it isn't going to get you get carried away that much. Is that the reality or is there something different inside? Yeah, no, it is. I mean, like I touched on earlier, I put a lot of pressure on myself in terms of like, no comment from a pundit or a fan or anyone else could put more pressure than what I put on myself to be the best. And to, yeah. So, of course, when I miss chances, I'll go home and look at a chance I missed and think, do you? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go. I look at pretty much all my games, goals I've scored, chances I've missed, because you never know what chance you're going to get again. But I never dwell on it. It's never like, like I say, I never let it affect me for the next game or the next chance. You know, yeah. I've always had self-belief. I always feel like I'm one of the best finishers in the world. So I never get too high or too low. I'm very level-headed in that aspect, really. It's interesting that I spoke to you about the last sort of people who inspire you or even the story around dropping in there. You've mentioned two American sportsmen. Are you inspired by American sports? Is it something that you think about America? Yeah, I don't know what it is. Do you want to go over there at some point? I, f I think so. I feel like over there, you know, it's maybe a bit more honest than what it is over here. You know, like... In what way? Maybe, like, in terms of the way the players talk in the press uh, or the, the way the, maybe the media allow them to do stuff. There's a lot of pressure over here, you know? But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an avenue I've, I've mentioned before about the NFL, maybe trying to do the NFL kicking. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Is that something that's really on your mind? Like you want to do it, don't you? Yeah, it's really something that I think I can, ach I can achieve. I think it'd be... I mean, I've, It's I've, mad, really, isn't it? Yeah, I just feel like if I could play in the NFL and do what I've done in football, I imagine that as an experience, imagine that as a career to do, uh, to do two different sports. So, I mean, I'm not expecting it to be easy. I know a lot of people think I'm just going to turn up and be an yeah. NFL kicker. I know it'll be a lot of hard work, a lot of practice, but it's just something that's always interested me because I feel like the kicking is almost the equivalent to like a penalty kick. So yeah. it's like, okay, a lot of people can score penalties in training and yeah. in NFL they can kick it a long way, but can you do it under pressure when the moment's big, when the game's on the line? And I think that aspect's a bit that maybe I have a little bit of an advantage over maybe some, some younger people in coming through, so. Do you practice all the time then now? Even no, not now, not no, now. No. So that's what so I mean. when's this gonna happen? Well, I guess it'll be, 
again, I've always said it depends on my career as well. Yeah. Like, I might get to 35 and be like, I've lost interest in that, I don't want to do that. But um, I guess it would be something after definitely maybe 10, 10, 15 years time, maybe late 30s to 40, if I'm still in the shape that I'd like to be in. I guess I'd start practicing maybe obviously nearer the time if, if it was a serious option. But I mean, we're talking years down the line. I don't want to say it's definitely <laughs> going to happen, but it's just something in the back of my mind that I'd love to try and achieve, yeah. Shearer's record is incredible. If I get to the end and I haven't broke that record and the Rooney England record, then I'd probably be a little disappointed in myself, if I'm honest. Ronaldo and Messi, I think, set the standard for everyone. The goal is to be the best. Has he just put that there? <laughs> sake. Couldn't give you it for free, could I? <laughs> Here we go. It's not bad, you know. It's not bad. Go on. Go on. I think oh, it'll roll he's, on. He's fighting it to the... <laughs> nice shot. With that shot, it could be dangerous. Yeah, what are we doing out here, mate? <laughs> the What's the into wind? The wind's just hard off the left. And I can fly at, what, 90? Or... Well, yeah. But you're still going to have to start it a bit left. Just on that tree left of it, I can just see the first one. I... Yeah. yeah. Over those two, between those two. 90 yard shot. Yeah. It's pretty good for light. Yeah, might be a bit short. Has he just put that there? Still get no response, Say. so. <laughs> joke! I couldn't give you it for free, could I? <laughs> oh. Shot, Harry. Thank you. Oh, it's He ain't going to give me that, is he? Oh, he... No, I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Are you? I'll give you that. It's kind. Hospitable, in fact. So I've got to hold this for the half? You, you do, yeah, yeah. Birdies for the half? You do, you do. I think you need pushing, to be fair. You yeah. need stretching. You don't want an easy, yeah, easy two or three up. You know what I mean? You need stretching. What are you seeing, Mace? Cup. Cup, right? Ah. No, no. Pile it through. No. All right. No, it's falling apart. All right, one down. I always wonder, like someone like you, very private, what do you do away from football? Because no one knows what you do. Yeah, I mean, I love playing golf. Obviously, we're here today. I love, I love going golf in my in my spare time. I've got three kids and love spending time with with them and my wife. And you know, we don't get too much time to do a lot, especially kind of the months October through to kind of yeah. February, March. We're so ram packed with games, and like, I'm big on recovery, so I don't want to do too much. And obviously, I'm just focused on the next game. Can I play? I want to be robust in that sense. So, yeah. but yeah, away from football, just spending time with the family going out for food with friends and, and playing golf. That's kind of the, the main things I do, really. Favourite food? Favourite food. I love a good steak and chips. Yeah. So, like, a good steak restaurant. It's about Japanese and stuff like that, but in general, steak, steak and, and chips. chips. Right. Let's Classic. go. All right, par five. Par six for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's good. Not yeah. bad. That's good. It's not bad. I need to try and make something happen on this hole. Don't force it. Some hit. Ah. It's yeah, over right. the top of mine, that one, isn't it? Not great, but it'll do. I never thought that I'd... I mean, obviously witnessed Alan Shearer's career and it almost mirrored mine in some ways. I never thought anybody would get near his record and I never thought anybody, to be fair, would go past Wayne Rooney's record, but you will. What can stop you? I guess injuries would be the biggest thing, obviously. I've had injuries, ankle injuries, and I haven't had anything that's kept me out for months and months, touch wood, but um, yeah, I guess for me, I think injuries would be be the biggest thing. Of course, it's always the op option of maybe moving abroad one day, but I don't think that's really interests me in the, in the near future. So um, yeah, in injuries, I guess, in, in my mind would yeah. be the only things, but like I said, I feel like I've got a good seven or eight years at the top. Yeah. When you look at kind of the message, Ronaldo, Lewandowski, Ibrahimovic, all kind of getting better as they get reach their early 30s yeah i'm still 27 so i've still 
got a, hopefully a long way to go. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely there. I'm still obviously quite a ways off, but you know, I, I'd like to think consistently I've scored 20 plus in my injury free seasons in the Premier League. So if I can do that for the next kind of four or five years, then then it'll be it'll be there. But uh, you want them records, though, don't you? Yeah, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I think if I get to the end and I, and I haven't broke that record and, and the and the Rooney England record, then I'd probably be a little disappointed in myself, if I'm honest, because it's definitely there if, if I carry on doing what I've been doing. So I guess, yeah, it'll just be a, a great sign of consistency over many a years. Yeah. I mean, Shearer's record is incredible when you think about it. 260 goals. So I guess there's just that little bit of motivation there just to push me and hopefully go beyond that. Is it the same ankle when you have the problem with it? What is it? No, so I've done a few on my right and a, and a couple on my left. Is it ligaments? Or? Ligaments, yeah. But I mean, when you look at the injuries, and, and I know people say, oh, he's got ankle problems, but you know, my ankles are as good as they've, they've ever have been. When you look at all the injuries, they've always been contact, they've always been caught under a player as, yeah. as they've slid. So, I mean, when you watch me shoot or watch me finish, a lot of the time my kind of ankle goes underneath me yeah. a little bit anyways. I've always had that that type of ankle, but um, yeah, I, I don't feel like I've got ankle problems. Or I don't feel like in the future it's something that will keep me out for a long time. I mean, like I said, I feel like this season especially, I've been in as good a place as I have for, for the last two, three years. You mentioned on the last hole Ronaldo, Messi and sort of those records, but then on this hole you mentioned Lewandowski and Ibrahimovic. Which of those sort of ones inspire and which, which of those players do you sort of admire the most and think, yeah, that's where I want to be in eight, ten years? Yeah, well, I mean, Ronaldo and Messi, I think, set the standard for everyone. I think what they've done over the period of, and still doing in, in their career has, has truly been remarkable and they kind of took it to another level, you know, all the records, all the goals. I mean, Messi scoring 90 or goals in a, in a year is unheard of for. So, um, yeah, them two are for sure the... They've set the standard. There's some amazing players around that, like I mentioned, but the goal is to be the best. So the goal is to try and reach their standards, reach their levels. And yeah, I feel like I've got m many more years to, to try and do that, try and achieve that. Right, can't see the flag. I'm going to head up. Yeah, see the light green tree? Yeah. Just left of the little gap. Green. That little fat green tree there? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, it's not a great lie, is it? Do you want something more loft? What? Do you want more loft? Oh, no. no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> It's all right, isn't it? It's not yeah. great. No, it's all right. That's fine. But we've got it going. Yeah. I was thinking of par five, just keep it going. Yeah. Keep it going. Oh, what are we doing here? We need, if we're going for it, we need everything. Yeah. Three wood, yeah? Yes, yeah, it's into off the right, so. And what? You see those grey trees with no foot, no leaves? Yeah, just right there. Like the left edge of those. That's your and line. it's going to bring it round. Yeah. So where's the pin, like the tree, the, the right? The pin's pretty much bang between the three trees on here. Okay, so just but, out on the right. Yeah, loads of space on the right. Oh. Go! Oh. You've hit it well. I've hit it as well as I could. <laughs> as well as I could. I read somewhere that you said about Clearing up your injuries. Thank you. you weren't going to drink during the season. Actually, you're absolutely teetotal during the season. Yeah, so during the season, uh, don't drink. And to be honest, it don't really interest me. Like, and I, no. Like some people say, oh, do you feel like you missed out when you was younger, not drinking and going out? But I used to go out with my mates and spend time with my mates. But I was never interested in drinking. Never like, oh, I want to drink. I want to get drunk. You know, that never really interested me. So I've, I've never really missed it. And even now, if I, if I go away, like with my missus or the family. Yeah. I might have the odd cocktail or things like yeah. that, but I won't be drinking like beer every night and stuff like that. So it's just you, never really been an interest. Do you know what your problem's going to be? What's that? You're going to get to my age, sort of 40s, and you go, I need to get some of that done. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to, it's that, that midlife crisis. Yeah, you're about, I know, you're about I 15, know. 20 years away from it, so don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're doing? A little bit. You just enjoy yourself a little bit when yeah. you're no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I mean, this is massive this summer for England. It feels like. You've obviously had a brilliant World Cup, the team's good, the spirit's good, Gareth's obviously got you absolutely spot on. Does it, not a now or never, does it feel like a little bit like a Tottenham moment a couple of years ago when you had that great group, you've got a home tournament, things are sort of pointing in the direction, does it feel like that moment's now? Yeah, I feel like we've got a, a really good opportunity, you know. I mean, we've always had good teams with England, but I feel like coming off the back of the World Cup, that experience, the group of players we've got who are kind of playing at the highest level in 
Champions League finals, playing for the best teams in, uh, in the world. Yeah, it's, it's a real opportunity for us, but, but as you know, it's not just you turn up with a good team and, and, you, and you win the tournament, you know, we've, got, yeah. we've still got to go out there and handle the pressure, handle being under the lights, because there is going to be a lot of pressure from the fans expecting us to, to do well. We're probably going to be one of the favourites going in, which hasn't always been the case over the last kind of 10 years or so. So I guess it'll be how we handle that. But I mean, we've got a great bunch of lads. I mean, I, I love going away with England, just meeting up with everyone, seeing everyone, training with the boys. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited, obviously. And even having the World Cup only a year later, yeah. next, uh, next winter, um, for sure is a massive opportunity for us. Who's the loudest in the group? Who are the ones that sort of like speak most, more vocal in the dressing room? You, you would be one, would you? Yeah, I mean, me, I, like, Henderson's a great, yeah. uh, great, he's a great leader, Hendo. I love Hendo, what he expects from, from players on the training field, but has a great relationship with everyone off the training field. Yeah. So he's a real good leader to have in the team. Um, Eric Dyer, like, I mean, yeah. gets on well with everyone, not afraid to, to talk on the pitch. Harry Maguire, again, he's a skipper at United, and you can yeah. see why, you know, he's, uh, he's got that leadership and captain material. But in terms of the group, yeah, I mean, a lot of us have known each other for a long time. A lot of the younger boys have known each other for a long time. So, like, are they still playing PlayStation? Still like, playing every, PlayStation every afternoon. Every, yeah, it's all like... stuff like that. So, <laughs> but it's like one of them. You go to dinner, and it's not like you've got certain people sitting there. Yeah. Sitting there. You literally, we all just mingle and sit together, yeah. and uh, that's the kind of relationship we have. You're not in the FIFA group then, no? I'm not in a FIFA. Nah. No. Not since my third kid come along. I'm <laughs> well and truly out of the PlayStation days. You're with the old men sleeping <laughs> in the afternoon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Afternoon that. Right, where am I? Oh, is that you on the no, green? You're back down there, look. What are you doing? Oh, oh my God. You need a buggy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Have you hit that next to the flag there in two? Yes. I told you I needed something. Oh. Tell you what, I've hit some decent shots today. I need to make sure you get all this on camera and send it to me just for my own personal uh, very good one. collage. Very one. I mean, I caught that as good as I could have, to be honest. Oh, hell, you should shout me at least. What the f is going on? Nine. Yeah. Pitch you measure nine. Uh, nine. Got to get there, Anna. I've yeah. got to get there. And it'll come back if you're a bit long. Yeah. Yeah. He's close, by the way. Yeah. In two. It's not right, you know. Is it long? Caddy's done him over, look, he's gone long again. Is that your caddy's fault again? He's <laughs> a nine iron. <laughs> Honestly. Crush he's imagining it. I'm going to miss it. <laughs> OK. It's not hard enough, is it? It's not a bad effort at all. It's that. all right. It's like you're playing Augusta from up there. It's all right. So where are we at? Are we level now? No. No, I'm playing for... I played four, so I'm four for three. You've going for your... What are you playing for? Five? Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm one ahead of you. Yeah. Oh! You can have that. Thank you. So this one for the half? Yeah. Just lap pace, isn't it? Oh! Level. Great effort. Oh. Level with one to play. Yeah. We made it interesting anyway. Who's the player in the Premier League that you look at and think, I'd score a bag full more goals if he was in my team? <laughs> Just mine for sure. Oh! No! No! <laughs>So, Harry, I don't know if you remember, but I went over to Valencia for yeah. a few months. And yep. on the way back, someone sent me a message saying failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. And it's always stuck with me since that, obviously, if you have a down moment, that it's not permanent that you move on. You've talked about your mentality before. What would be your low moment? I know you've had, to be fair, incredible highs, but what would be your low moment so far in your career and how did you handle it? Low man, I'd have to say when I was on loan, when I was 19, I went to Norwich on loan. I mean, I had two good loans before that, so uh, League One, Leighton Orient, Championship Millwall, and then I went to the Premier League with Norwich. 
And uh, I mean, I, I felt I was in a good place. I felt my career was progressing. I actually fractured my fifth metatarsal about a month into me being there. Yeah. Got back from that three months later, I kind of couldn't back, get back into the team. So I decided to leave in January and go to Leicester, who were near the top of the championship at the time. And again, started well, scored a couple of goals in my first few games and then just kind of got benched. I couldn't get into the team. The team weren't doing great, like we was losing. We went from like top to like seventh in a matter of weeks. And yeah, it was almost like a reflection. I was almost saying to myself, if I can't play for, for Leicester in the championship, how am I then going to play for Tottenham in the, in the Premier League? So again, that was the, kind of the first moment I thought maybe a little bit of self-doubt just crept in. But, you know, I had great family around me. My wife now was with me and was just there to kind of pick me up and give me confidence and say, it's not my, I said about my dad, you know, we move on, everything's going like, to, we just work harder and, and it'll be OK. And I mean, I've always had self-belief, so it's almost, it, it wasn't, a, l a long moment that I was down for it, so like, okay, in, in a way, this is more motivation, more, more kind of uh, energy to to try and prove people wrong, to prove the people that weren't playing me, prove the managers that weren't playing me that actually I, I'm going to be a great player. And the next season, I went back to Spurs. And they tried to send me on loan again, and I and I said to them, I want to stay and, and prove that I can play at, at this level. And who was that to? That was with AVB, and that was probably the best decision I made because he. He, he actually got fired. I played a few games, but I was training so well. You know, I felt like that was the turning point in my career. That even some of the players at the time were coming up to me saying that you're, you're knocking on the door. You should, you should be getting a chance soon. And then Tim Sherwood coming in in December. And again, didn't play for the start with Tim. It wasn't until the last kind of six weeks of the season he threw me in. I scored three in my first three, and from there, like, I knew I could do it at this level. So I was real confident. But um, yeah, that, that stage when I was 19 was was a tough moment, but it almost made me the player that I am now. And how do you cope? How do you cope in that moment? Just work, or yeah, for me it was just to keep my head down and work even harder. You know, yeah. I, I didn't want to make excuses. I didn't want to blame anyone. It was always down to me. So it's always like, okay, how can I improve? How, can I do more in the gym? Can I do more finishing after training? What can I do to give myself the the best opportunity to to play? And uh, and that's what I done that season after that. It was I was in the gym every day. I was training hard after after every session, doing finishing, doing everything. I remember one stage I, I only practiced with my left foot for like three months. I didn't touch the ball with my right foot. I just wanted to train with my left and every finishing session I'd done it was left foot, left foot, left foot. And that obviously my left foot finishing become a lot better than, yeah. and you can see that in my game today. So yeah, it was just to work harder and, and like I say, leave, leave nothing to, no excuses out there. It was down to me and I was going to make sure I got there. Has a the manager ever said anything to you that sort of thought, I don't like that, that's not helped me? Not really, no. I mean, like even managers and, and things like that, I'm always kind of my own self-critic. So, I mean, like no disrespect to any of my managers, but I always feel like I was the better finisher than any of my managers, for example. <laughs> so I, I would never like listen to them in terms of this is yeah. how I want you to finish. I was always back to my own ability. I'd always learn from them in terms of how to approach stuff. And I was always a great listener. So, you know, you tell me something once and I understand it and yeah. I'll make sure I do it. So I never had to... There was never like two or three, four times I got something wrong. If I got something wrong, and everyone makes mistakes, but I definitely try not to make the same mistake twice. So, but no, there's nothing that a manager said to me that stuck in my mind of negativity or stuff. I'm, I'm a real positive person, so any negative comments or stuff like that, I kind of just brush off the shoulder anyway. So you level with me with one all to play. Yeah. You got self doubts? No, no. <laughs> this is my track. This is me. <laughs> all right, let's go. Oh, a little right, but yeah, it'll be all right. Didn't bother you on the last hole, did it? No. <laughs> Just don't go left on this hole. It's a bit of advice I'll give you. I'm going to ask you about fullbacks on this hole, about Chilwell, about Shaw, about Alexander Arnold and Trippier. Okay. You get some crosses now, don't you? I Being do. Fullbacks, you've good... been no good. You've been having a right <laughs> go at me. Oh no. All right, walk and talk together then. Yeah. <laughs> To talk to you about it, it seems of obviously there's a big debate. It's so many great fullbacks now in English football. I mean, the goals that are now being scored, how's that game changed from when you first started in terms of the sort of attacking fullbacks, the deliveries, the attacking play? Yeah, I mean, it's a, well, it's a huge part of football nowadays. It's a huge attacking option for teams. You know, I, I guess kind of when you were playing, it's more just about defending. I mean, obviously you'd attack every now and then, but. Yeah. 
the, the focus was on defending. I feel like nowadays a lot of the fullbacks' focus is on attacking and, and how creating chances, getting assists. And for England, we've been lucky enough to have well, we've got some amazing fullbacks from on both sides, really. So almost spoilt for choice. I mean, obviously Gareth's got a, a decision to make. I know, 26 players might help him. I know, I know. But eight fullbacks. <laughs> but you know what it's like in the squad. It, for me, it's not just picking about picking the best players. I feel like you've got to pick some players who, who might not be as good, but they might be better for the change room. You know? yeah. they, might be, they might understand their role a little bit better. Yeah. They might understand they're not going to play, maybe not play one game, yeah. but they want to be there. So I guess that's a tough choice for a manager, getting yeah. that balance. So there's no easy choice there. You've just got to kind of think what's best for the squad. Who's the toughest player you play against in the Premier League that you play against and you go, he's giving me nothing him. I've played against him a few times now and it's tough. Well, early on in my career, John Terry, I played against him a couple of times and he was so switched on in kind of positioning, positioning, like just his body movement, trying to take him on, he'd always get his body across and, yeah. and make it really difficult. So he's a really smart defender. Yeah. I mean, Van Dijk now for Liverpool is a great defender, like big, strong, fast. You have to kind of, yeah, maybe. Do you work on the other side away from him or do you try and, what, what do you, what do, you no, do no, in a game like that? I'd never kind of go away from a defender. I mean. With my game now, like I said, dropping deep and trying to get on the ball in different ways. Yeah. There might be times where I'm not going to run in behind someone like Van Dijk, but I'll try and maybe drag him out of his position yeah. and maybe utilise it that way. So, um, yeah, there's some some great defenders, and like I say, even in Europe, playing against people like Sergio Ramos, Chiellini, you know. Yeah. Just smart defenders who know know the tricks, know how to kind of use their body well. And for me, that's that's the best type of the what a toughest type of defender to face. Who's the player in the Premier League that you look at and think, I'd score a bag full more goals if he was in my team? Ah, oh, De Bruyne. <laughs> De Bruyne for sure. <laughs> them little, them little... <laughs> when I watch De Bruyne play, you know, he's a special, special player and some of the balls I see him put in for City are just a striker's dream if I'm honest. <laughs> but yeah, he's an outstanding, you've seen it year yeah. on year out, outstanding player with the ball, off the ball, pressing. Um, but his delivery is as good as I've ever seen, to be honest. Yeah, like my shot to this green now, <laughs> De Bruyne-like. Here we go. We're not this far is away big, from each other, yeah? It's a big moment. Are you, are you, are you all right there? Just <laughs> Don't shank it. No, I know. Oh, you f Oh, he's found another trap. Oh, oh deep bunker. not now. It's a smooth one. Is it a bad lie you've got? a nice one, just left no, a bit. up like a peach. What's that? <laughs> just over the right half of that bunker. Right just, half. Just a hair left of the flag. It's not a big one, though. It's just a nice one. Just while you're playing this shot, I know it's an important shot, but VAR, just talk to me about VAR. I'll talk to you after I do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all right, that. It's got to go. It's all right. It's good up there, isn't it? Go on, VR, scrap it, keep it. I mean, I was all right until the other day, I'll be honest. <laughs> I mean, how that was given offside, I will never, I will never You're understand. You're a goal short, aren't you? I'm a goal short now, but I mean, I don't think scrap it. I think there definitely needs to be adjustments to it. Like, for example, I'm not just saying it because it was my goal. There's been many goals where the margin for error is so small on an yeah. offside. It can't be like that because, I mean, it takes, like, for example, if my goal was given the other day, I mean, what do I do? Go and celebrate again? Or, yeah. I mean, it takes away that instant yeah. moment of like uh, scoring a goal. That's one of the best feelings you'll ever feel in, in football. So it's like when VAR coming in, I guess everyone, the fans especially, thought, OK, we're going to get a definitive answer. It's a yeah. red card or it's not a red card. Yeah. But it's still a matter of opinion. There's still yeah. been many decisions where, you know, it's a 50 50. We're not quite sure. There's still been talk after us, but people expect it to be right because yeah. VAR is there. So I think there just needs to be adjustments. There needs to be. What would you adjust? The offside line off the foot, maybe, or yeah, maybe like a, a clear, maybe daylight, or I mean, the benefit has always kind of been a rule to go to the striker in yeah. in football, whether that's right or wrong. But for example, for my one the other day, my whole body's behind his body, so yeah. and my feet are in line. So I mean, that's not. I'm not gaining an advantage from no. that, but I mean, it's hard. You've, Maybe just gone a, you've just gone a little bit early, haven't you? Just, I mean, I'm so happy with the finish as well. I was delighted with it. Well, I mean, what about you? What do you think? What do you... I think keep it, but I think they've got to simplify it and yeah. bring it back to a couple of things. I don't mind the offside, but I think they've got to change the... 
Because I mean, in Europe, it seems to be a lot quicker in terms yeah. of like my one the other day, for example. I think they would have just that would have been a quick decision, yeah, not offside yeah. and or offside. Yeah. Whereas like they was doing one line that didn't quite work out. Let's do another line. It's yeah. like two, three minutes on the pitch waiting. Yeah. So I think that aspect of it just got to be a little bit, yeah, a little bit cooter. European Super League. Yeah, I mean, obviously you had some strong <laughs> opinions on that yourself, but um, what do your players think? Are you, yeah. you're at one of the clubs. Yeah, I mean, we d we didn't know a thing about it, so we was as surprised as anyone else. We kind of woke up and were going into the Super League. So again, I agree. I agree. I, I didn't like the idea of it. I thought. We play you've been football. at Leighton Orient, haven't you? You've been at yeah. Norwich, you've been at clubs that are lower down. And I think just to compare this, yeah. like not to be able to, what are you, what are you playing with? If you're not winning the league, what are you playing for? There has to be some reward for being top four or top six. Or, so that aspect of it, I just really didn't like. So okay, so I'm happy with, with the outcome. I'm sure there's going to be some sort of yeah. second wave, probably not as, as much as what, what it was, obviously. I think they really misunder, uh, underestimated the reaction of what it was going to be like for for players and fans, um, but again, yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see, but I'm, I'm happy that it, it didn't go through. Good, right, here we go. This is it. Oh, I've got a little tricky one down the hill there. I hope so. I mean, look at this. Am, am I closing the... Just keep it, yeah, relatively uh, neutral. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh! No! No! <laughs> oh no! No! Oh no! The bunker, the bunker, the bunkers are hard around here. I'll give oh you that. Oh my god! It's like a sheer wall in front of it. It's like, <laughs> oh dear! Bottled it on the last. Oh, hang on! Well hang on! Oh, it's well Give out there. Give myself a chance. Give myself a chance. So what have I played now for? Yeah. Harry's two. Honestly, how that stopped there, I have not got that normally comes all the way down. Unfortunate. It's a big moment, Harry. I mean, this is as quick as they come. I can't believe the ball stopped there, if I'm honest. Look where I'm aiming here. Oh. Oh. Mm. Ah. Oh, we're in injury time. I need to get this in really though, don't I? That's the problem. No, it's so bad. It is so bad. Go on, pick that up. I'll put this for the win. All or nothing, win or a draw. Good game, good game. Oh. The last. Harry, so on the overlap, we always give everyone a gift, and Thanks. I've got you a bottle of champagne. I know you don't drink during the season, so it's not pre Euros. Okay. It's hopefully on July the 12th. When we win it. When you win it. That'd be nice. Thank you very much. And I'll be rooting for you. Well done. I appreciate Brilliant it. Thank, to you. To you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you.